Friday. It is Friday, the 1st of November. <clears throat> Happy Halloween for those that celebrate Halloween. Last night it was Halloween, <clears throat> certainly here in Australia. My name is Tanja. I'm a peak performance specialist for real estate and property professionals. Everything I do is designed to give you access to live a life you love, like now, and achieve your success both personally and professionally in the least amount of time. G'day, PK. Want to shout out to all the people that aren't in real estate and property that do choose to tune in on a Friday just because they dig the content or they're really supportive. Taylor, good morning to you. Hi to all of our friends on Facebook. You know what I'm going to say. I can't see who you are yet. <clears throat> I have a technician coming out between one and five today. Hallelujah. Apparently there's a problem with the NBN. So anyway, boring story. How are you? Write in one word to describe how you are this morning. How are you feeling when you connect with yourself? How are you feeling? Uh, I am feeling just really alive and vital. I feel really connected with my purpose. I feel really in alignment with where I'm going and what I'm doing. I've come out of a really crazy couple of weeks, so I'm feeling grateful, alive, and, and vibrant. So how are you feeling? Uh, so today, what is Rapid Fire Friday? If you've never tuned in before, it's where I, as a peak performance coach, just reflect on the top key uh, coaching themes for the week and rapid fire some tips that hopefully you can implement into your business or your life to give you access to achieve your goals and dreams in the least amount of time. So do me a favor, first of all, and type in live if you're watching this live or record if you're watching the recording. Awesome. So, you know, I had a number of coaching sessions this week. Hey, Brooke, great to have you here, my love. Thank you for your well wishes. Great to do our, um, our text conversation uh, this week. PK's live, good to hear. <clears throat> so a couple of key themes this week. The first theme is I use this analogy with my coaching clients that you need to be a heart surgeon in your business. So whatever business you're in or a job that you're in, why do I think you need to be a heart surgeon? Well, think about your heart is your business and blood is the, you know, the prospecting or the leads or the opportunities for you to have your heart pumping in your business. I'm glad you're live, Brooke. And there are so many people and a couple of my clients who are just kind of casual heart surgeons. You know, they've got the patient on the table, which is their business. The heart is sitting there and their job is to make sure that the blood is pumping. But, you know, they're sitting in the, you know, the, the um, canteen talking about the weather or they're ordering the gloves or they're talking to the nurses. Like there's not this sense of urgency and precision around what you need to do to keep your business flowing and your heart pumping and the blood running through your veins. Now, I had a session with a couple of clients, you know, um, principals, and they've come a long way since they've started coaching. Yet, I said to them, guys, you feel really casual about your your performance or your tasks. How, how did I know that? They're not completing their homework. Um, you know, they're great operators. Their business is doing really well, yet they're below in their targets. And I said, you're just casual about it. I don't want you to be intense and insane and, and stressed out about it, but you do need to kind of have a level of seriousness and, um, a sense of urgency because if your business is not performing, the heart of your business is just not going to pump blood through the rest of it. It's not going to be oxygenated. You're going to suffer and struggle and then you're going to have to give it CPR. Does that make sense? Hey, Melba, great to have you here, my love. So where in your business are you being casual? Where, if, if you are the heart surgeon of your business, where are you not actively focusing on getting blood pumping through? Where are you inconsistent? Where are you performing and then you hit a certain level and you kind of then go, oh yeah, I don't need to operate here anymore. I don't need to make sure there's blood flow here anymore. And then you, you, your business is feeling anemic <clears throat> and then you're like, shit, I better get some blood happening again and you're reactive. It is really important, especially for principals, that you allocate time in your intentional week to work both in and on the business. You need to know exactly how many liters of blood your business needs to have pumping through it, meaning listings, appraisals, and sales. And if you're not, if you're casual about it, we'll expect a casual result. So 
you know, I love these, I love all my clients and I love how straight I could be with these. I just said, you just feel casual. You know, your homework's not done. You, you've got a bunch of excuses or you just haven't done it. You know, like sometimes I'm up till two o'clock in the morning or four, uh, four hours sleep because I got to do a little bit of surgery because I didn't have time during the day. So where are you being casual? Where are you not keeping your business alive and pumping? G'day Tash, great to have you here. And if you related to you, yourself and your business like a heart surgeon where the life of your patient really depends on how precise and how focused and how dedicated you were to making sure there was blood flow in your business how differently would you act what would you do just to, I'm just curious I'd love to you on Facebook to write some comments I'm sorry I cannot um, interact with them yet hopefully we get that fixed with our technician today so if you were being a heart surgeon what would you do differently and and what is the current health of your business if it was laid, laying on the operating table <clears throat> Uh, do you have a sense of urgency about your success? I don't mean stress. I don't mean panic. I don't mean frantic energy. That's unsustainable and boring anyway. But are you making it important? Because it is your livelihood and it's access to a really great future. So something for you to consider. Uh, here's another perspective about where I think principles go wrong with commission only um, clients and agent uh, commission only agents number one they see them as commission only agents they see them just as a number who may generate revenue to their business all principles in my humble opinion must treat their client their agents whether they're salary retainer or commission as their clients because they absolutely are they're your clients. They're the one bringing revenue into the business. They're the one actually bringing, sorry, I'm just looking to put my air conditioner on. It's hot in here. They're the ones that are bringing leads to your business. They're the ones that are out there giving your brand um, uh, exposure and marketing your business. So principals need to think that all of their staff, whether they are commission only agents, BDMs, PMs, um, admin and accounts people, uh, like property managers, please treat your people like they're your clients. I promise you it will influence the way you see them, the way you speak with them, the way you engage with them, the way you service them much better than before. Yay, I can see everyone on Facebook. G'day Karen, g'day Greg, g'day Josh, Kate, great to have you here. Hi Fiona. Hey Agent Asia, great to have you here. Hello, I can finally see you. Is this making sense to you by the way? And yes, Greg, super excited. Less now than one month to go till we do your face-to-face coaching session in the beautiful city of Adelaide I cannot wait and I'm really grateful for all of your energy that you provide every week my friend thank you thank you also to all of you that tune in you know whether you're in real estate whether you're a principal or not I always hope you hear something for yourself that you can implement immediately so principals those that are leaders treat your people like your life source of your business not your workforce now the conversation I had with another principal client of mine this week was they had a complaint that they felt some of their commission only agents were not on the same page and were potentially kind of looking for jobs elsewhere and just weren't playing ball. And they were starting that they were expressing frustration and, and they also were expressing they had an intuitive hunch that maybe they're, they're headed in a different direction and they were getting angry about it or frustrated about it and I said to them listen you got to get curious about it these are people you employed they're not you know like these are people you engaged if they're unhappy if they're cracking the shits which they did she told me there was three stories where they kind of cracked it and stormed off and didn't come back into work the next day get curious lean into the conversation and never ever step over that stuff because if your people in your business behave that way and you let it go as I say often the standard you walk past is the standard you accept when you accept that that's okay it's going to have a toxic and a negative effect on everyone else in your business and then you make that okay and it's it's the norm so my coaching to them was you cannot step over that kind of behavior you also cannot go in in, in a disciplinary sense you need to go in with curiosity and say hey Fred and Wilma I don't know why I'm using the Flintstones you know I I noticed that you know you're you had a big reaction about this that happened yesterday and you didn't come in for the rest of the day I'm curious what what occurred for you what was the source of that upset and get genuinely interested before you pass judgment or before you make up stories about what's happening and as a leader here's my again humble opinion 
the performance of your people, whether commission only or retainer or salary, is on your watch. It's in your hands. It's in your heart. So don't judge them for how they are. Get curious and get genuinely interested. There may be some performance management issues you've got to get. Yes, Aisha, I, I agree with you. Robert, hey, Harry, have empathy always. Guys, I love it when you interact. Please do. Please interact. Please write what you think. If you agree, disagree. If you have a different point of view or opinion, if if you've had an experience. G'day, um, Robin, great to have you here too. Such a rare leadership quality. This is why I am super passionate about leadership. I believe leadership is an absolute privilege and an honour because the the fulfilment of people's potential exists in the palm of your hands. And leaders who treat their people like their futures, the fulfilment of their futures is their responsibility. Man, you watch what happens to productivity and performance. Julie Anderson, hello, beautiful. Julie, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for all of your support that you have given me over the years when I ask you a question particularly about HR. Julie Anderson is the HR, the head of HR for uh, EVU Group, an amazing national brand, and she is masterful at what she does. And whenever I have a question on behalf of my principals or clients, I reach out to Julie, and she's an amazing support. So, Julie, I love you. Thank you, and thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a beautiful day. Brooke is saying, love not stepping over behaviour. Ooh, listen, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> Whether you're a leader or not, as I said, the standard you walk past is the standard you accept. If you step over behavior, you endorse that behavior and you make that norm and the status quo. And the fastest way you can lose respect from your people if you are a leader is if your people know that you know someone's actually not playing the rule by the rules or the agreements and is having a toxic impact on the team and you're doing nothing about it. Fastest way to lose respect. Um, in, in addition to not having integrity. So if you're an age, if you're a leader and you do have commission only agents, don't drop your standards because you're not paying them because it's still a massive cost to your business when they're unhappy, unfulfilled, unproductive, disengaged, not positively representing your brand out there. And if they've got a big slice of your earning capacity pie, and you're not performance managing them because they're just a number and it doesn't matter, then you can expect to have a huge loss in your business because there's a massive opportunity in that slice of the pie that you could be giving to someone more engaged. It is tricky uh, as a principal having commission only agents because you're letting people run their business within your own business. And the, the other point that I made with this principal that I coach is the critical need for values. It's something that we've had on the agenda in our coaching for ages. It keeps getting put to the back burner. This is a top performing agency, multi award nominated agency, and they have been kind of putting off doing their values. Here is why values are critical. If you're not driving, I really would love you to get pen and paper. If you are a one person operation, you need values. If you're a multinational or an international brand, you need values. Hey, Michelle Carr, how are you beautiful? Good morning. Hope you're feeling great. <clears throat> Uh, here's why values are critical. Values are the how we fulfill on our organizational why, right? I'll say that again. Values are how we fulfill on our organizational why. They are the pillars to our performance. And there's six critical reasons why they're vital to have in your business. Number one, as I said, they are the how you fulfill on your why. They're what you stand for. And if you don't know where you stand, you'll fall for anything. They give you access, as Julie will say, to effectively recruit. Because when you recruit someone in your business, no matter what role, you really need two key things. You need goal congruency. Do you and the other person want the same things? Do you both want to grow? Are you both going to take responsibility and accountability for the success of the role and the business? And do you have values alignment? Do you stand for the same things? Do you desire the same things? One of the reasons why there's high turnover in business, I know I'm going rapid fire, but I want to give you as much content as I can. One of the, the reasons why people uh, have high turnover is because they haven't done a goal congruency and a values alignment assessment at the phase and stage of interviewing and recruiting. It 
is critical. Values are also an amazing tool for performance management because if you have clear values in your business and someone's not performing to the agreement, yes, I agree, Brooke, Brooke totally, values, 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 then how can you performance manage them? So if you, let's say you have, you know, love and kindness, respect and responsibility and courage and brave heart, brave heartery, I don't know, making it up, and people aren't actually performing, you can say, look, where do you, Fred, which value do you think you, you, you're not um, agreeing to right now or you're not demonstrating right now? And you can encourage your people to establish some emotional intelligence and reflect on where are they not embodying the commitments and agreements that they started in the company. G'day Lloyd, great to see you tuning in for Rapid Fire Friday. So, and hey, the holistic home, always great to have you here as well. So where are you not fulfilling on the values? And you can do this at home if you're a parent, if you don't have values at home. With my kids, um, certainly when they were younger, it was um, respect, responsibility, fun, and um, uh, kindness. So if there was a poor behavior with the kids, I would say, what value are you breaking right now? They would say, yeah, respect. I'm like, great. So what do you need to do to clean that up? And if I was breaking a value, believe me, they were onto it as well. Hey, Nicole. Oh, good. You're, you're chatting to each other. I love that. So um, values are also a really great process where you can uh, sift problem solving decisions through. So for example, if you have a problem, issue, challenge or concern in your business and you have some core values that you stand for, you can go to those values and say, if we were being courageous right now, what would we do with this decision? Or if we were being generous right now, what action could we take? And watch what happens when you sift your problem solving through the core values in your business, you just get access to really great ideas and content. So that's another reason why they're critical. Um, here's my tip on values. I have said this before in, I think, a Mindset Mastery Monday. Too many companies, A, or businesses, don't have core values. So if you don't know where you stand, you'll fall for anything. It makes performance management really hard. Too many companies, if they do have values, they have 10. No one can remember them. No one can embody them. So I believe have no more than five. You want to be able to hold them in the palm of your hand. I have three core values. Here are mine. Deeply connect authentically communicate and boldly contribute. There are bullet points under each of those, but everything we do in our business and all of my team, whether they're employees or contractors, they're briefed on the values, they're super clear of what I stand for and I never step over them. And if I see any behavior or I'm dropped my values, I get responsible and I clean it up straight away. Hey, picture by Pauline, great to have you tune in here, 72. So does that make sense? Let me ask you, oh, Michelle loves it. Do you have values in your business? Do you have pillars for performance? Do you have things that you stand for? And if not, I invite you to do this as homework for the next week. I invite you to just get a piece of paper and write down what are the top three to five qualities that I would love to have my business um, uh, operate from. And I'll give you an example of um, values that I think are really great because listen, everyone has integrity and honesty and professionalism. It's boring. It's a snooze fest. There's nothing unique to you and your brand. I think realestate.com.au, they've done a great job at establishing their core values. Go and Google them and see what they've written. They've got values like own it, do it with heart, um, inspire it, imagine it. And it's they've got real action-based Hey, Ben, uh, values. So values are critical. Finally, I had another coaching session with a client that is starting work with a new agency. They've had a month off. My invitation to them in that month off was have the month off to defrag, but also prepare yourself for success. What actions can you take now that will pull the future towards you? So if you're starting a new job, if you're starting a new role, rather then just rock up on the day and like I've arrived and let's get started. How can you use the three steps for success, an architecture that I coach through every single day, hour, minute, meaning raise your standards, simplify your strategies and elevate your state. 
how can you prepare yourself for success and your employee? So an example of this with my client is, I said, find out what the, the standards are and get clear on what your performance is going to be for the first three months. Reverse engineer a strategy. Then get clear about what are the strategy, what are the simple strategies in the business, tools and resources. Do you know what their CRM system is? Have you got yourself trained? Have you booked training in advance? Have you organized your own week-long induction where you're just immersing yourself in the business and the brand so you can get, you know, um, uh, get some traction pretty quickly? Make sure if you've got resources like people or tools or templates or processes that you get all of them. I have the privilege of working with most major brands across Australia and some internationally. Here's what I will say. A lot of the major franchises have done the work for you. There's tools. Julie, I know if you're still on here, my love, how much work has Eview done? Like it's one of the best companies I've seen as far as preparing their team members for success. However, I think there's a huge opportunity for you. If you work for a brand, dive deep into using the tools, templates, resources, and systems that are available to you because most people are only using them at around 50%. So you're getting 50% efficiency and effectiveness. And then people reinvent the wheel or they're not using the tools that are there. So set yourself up for success by exploring and hacking into what the company that you're working for or your own company, what simple strategies do you have in place to build efficiency, effectiveness, automation uh, in your business so you can just get out there and be the heart surgeon bringing more blood into the heart of your business by connecting with more people. Too many people are scared about technology. Listen, technology is there to build efficiency and service people now because people are up looking at property at 11 o'clock at night, right? Hello, Amy. Great to have you here. <clears throat> so let's let technology free people up to do what people do best, and that service people. So that's my quick rapid fire Friday. You need to relate like you're a heart surgeon in your business. And if and no matter what business you're in, I want you to reflect, personally reflect, have I been actively ensuring that the arteries are open, that there is nothing clogging my business, that there is blood flow happening, constant prospecting, that I'm not out there ordering the gloves, that I've got people ordering the gloves so I can be in here doing finite surgery to make sure this heart is going to have incredible long longevity. <clears throat> hey legend, quick question. If you are running a team, should you have your own values for your team as well as a business? Uh, oh, do you mean, so Lloyd, have your own values for your team if you're part of a company that has their own values? Is that, is, I just want to be clear. People are moving faster, aren't they Harry? People are moving faster. It's no longer nine to five. Um, yes. Okay. Hey, William, great to have you here too. <clears throat> I agree with you, Harry, by the way, they are moving faster and so must we, but let's not hide behind technology. Let's set it up. I'm doing a lot of work in the back end to set it up so I can just be out here serving, speaking, coaching, training, writing, writing online courses. Okay. Back to you, Lloyd. Great bloody question, my friend. So Lloyd's question is, if I work for a business or a brand and they have their own values, should I have my own for my team? The first thing I would ask you is, uh, check in. Do you have values alignment with the brand that you work with? Is there a genuine, authentic, wholehearted congruency with it? And if there is, awesome, I would ask you, does it feel true for you to fully adopt those values and bring them to life in your own way rather than reinvent the wheel? Or is there a bit of an adaptation where you can live by the company values but you want to pepper in one, two or three of your own? Or if you aren't aligned with the values, then I would ask you, <clears throat> and I'm not saying you are, but this is for everyone because you asked the question, Lloyd. Thank you, brother. Um, if you're not aligned with the company values or you don't feel the company is delivering on the values that they say, then that's a conversation you want to have, a manage up conversation, which is a separate Mindset Mastery Monday topic. And of course, you could create your own values. I'm a big believer that um, like congruency is key. So check, recheck the values of the organization. Is there congruency and alignment and authentic, genuine engagement? And can and how can you and the team bring them to life? But if there's things that you stand for, then absolutely bring them into your team. As long as your team then don't have 17 values that they have to try and 
and fulfill on because here's the deal vision and values too many people go yeah i've done it and they frame it and they put it on the boardroom wall and it's boring in there because nothing happens and no one is embodying the values whether it's the company values or your values it's are you embodying them are you bringing them to life and also how are you performance managing your people so i lord i know i haven't answered your question directly other than Check if there's a goal congruence and values alignment with the company that you work with and how can you fully adopt and embody those in a way you may never have before and ask your team the same. And if you feel that there's a couple of elements missing, like you value fun, maybe you value, you know, innovation, maybe you value, um, you know, emotional intelligence, maybe you value, you know, courage. You can chuck it in and make sure, though, that it's very clear when communicating with your people. These are the company values. This is how we bring them to life. And as a core team, this is also what I personally stand for. I'm sorry about that. Um, so let me know, Lloyd, if that makes sense. Love your work too, brother. Hey, Marianne, are there any other questions while I have your beautiful selves here? Any question at all? Any question about success, any challenge you have, any question of, for me of, of how, what I do to rise above challenges, to live a great life, to be courageous and show up, anything at all. If not, I think reception's a bit bad and I know I've almost got to half an hour. So Julie Anderson, thank you as always, Tanch, for a great session. So articulately delivered. And it couldn't, almost didn't say articulately. <laughs> right. Thank you for your love, Julie. I really appreciate it. Okay, guys, listen, this is free. It comes from my heart to you because I want you to thrive. Too many of us are just bloody surviving and we are not reaching our potential. There is a genius in you. There is, there is a genie in you that has a heart full of ideas and opportunities and desires and I want you unleashed I want you to live a life that gives you goosebumps when your feet hit the floor every single morning so if you know that there is something that is inhibiting that full self-expression of you if you you know there's a funky thing in your past that is sabotaging your success and joy and fulfillment and confidence today why are you sitting on it when you can reach out to me and ask a question and I'll answer it for free confidently of course confidentially this is my articulation Julie <laughs> of course you can book in a 30 minute free discovery session which is valued at 250 or you can DM me a question and I'll answer it in mindset mastery Monday and if you do, you're doing me a favor too because you give me access to live my purpose, which is to empower people to fulfill their full potential now. That's why I exist. That's why I'm here. That's what I made my life about. So I love you. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for engaging. Thank you for interacting. Please go and have an awesome life. If you have show day tomorrow, Speak from the heart and don't be transactional. Every person that's coming in is looking for a home, looking for an investment, looking to get to the next level of their lives. If you're just taking numbers and putting people in your database, you are missing the point. Book me in for a discovery session, Anita. Boom. You know what? That's what successful people do. Successful people act immediately. That's why I had a go at my, some of my clients this week. I'm like, you're just casual about your success. You're not completing. You've got two weeks to do your homework and you're not doing it. You're casual about your success. So, Anita, um, can you please make sure you put your um, email address in here, my love, and I will get my assistant onto that today. I love you. Actually, go, Anita, go straight to tmjcoaching.com.au and when you get to the homepage, there's book in my complimentary discovery sessions. Is that okay, my love? Just go book it in. The available dates uh, will come up. Harry, brilliant work, champion. Love you. Thank you, brother. But brother, brother brother um amy says thank you so much for this with a startup business it's frustration not to have the funds to do what you have listen like as tony robbins says let's not blame resources money time staff energy here's what successful people do amy and i absolutely believe this in you we got to be resourceful with what we have you have the same 24 hours i have you have 
the same air that I have. You have the same keyboard, not the same, but you have the same access to Google. There is so much free content out there that you can access. Lloyd, you do this all the time. Gary Veeing all over the place, right? There's so much free content. You just have to find a messenger that you connect with. You just have to tune in and absorb. You have to sign up for those free courses. And don't use a lack of funds, time, energy, staff as a reason why you can't go to the next level. Do you know success, I believe, is not a destination. It is I know it's cliche. It's not the destination. It's the journey. It's how how did we work stuff out along the way and where did we get stopped and where did we use that as the reason why we can't progress? Those that are unstoppable, like Anita, who just said, book me in. Good. Anita, just do it. Do it today. Like su successful people make decisions and they act swiftly. That's what gives them momentum. The number one thing that hinders my progress is when I procrastinate and get in my own way. You better believe it. And have I done it? Yes. Many times. So think, act, think, act. Whatever you got out of today, even if it's one thing, even if it's half a thing, what is the action you can take to implement the information immediately and give yourself access to success now? like now. That's what I would love to know. Uh, you are very, very welcome, Amy. Um, speaking my language, Amy's going to book it in. Look at you. Listen, there's no free, there's no set of steak knives. There's no hard sell. There's no jacket with shiny fake watches in here for me to pitch to you. It's from my heart to you. Get out of your way. Let's solve your problems. Let's get you unleashed and let's get you and the heart of your business pumping like a newborn full of energy and oxygen so you can live a great life and be of service to others and as always in the words of the late great mayor angelou remember people yes peach treat your business like you're a heart surgeon i promise you you will think differently if you look at your heart if you look at the heart of your business based on your performance and productivity what condition is it in are the arteries you know clogged is it blue do you need to you know with those things. <laughs> hey, Kitty. Kitty Baroque. Is that not a sexy name or what? All right. I'm wrapping up with Maya Angelou's quote. Remember, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never, ever, ever forget how you made them feel. Let me ask you, when you walk in the room, what is the energy that fills the space? Consider that. When you walk in a room, what's the energy that fills the space? as Oprah has a sign on her office door, be responsible for the energy you bring into the room, be responsible for the energy you bring into the homes and you're open for inspections to, for tomorrow, be responsible for the energy you bring home to your family after a hard day's work, be responsible for the energy you bring into your body by the thoughts that you have in your head. This is your temple. Be the heart surgeon for you first, give yourself the oxygen, then everybody else. Go live a phenomenal life. I'm here for you. Amy, Anita, I'll be looking today for the booking for the discovery sessions, ladies. Can't wait. I love you. Thank you for hanging out with me. Send me your questions for Mindset Mastery Monday. Share this with friends if you feel like it added value. D, I love you. Tune into the recording, my love. Have a beautiful week, guys. I'll see you Monday for Mindset Mastery Monday next week. Ciao to our friends on Instagram and big love to you guys on Facebook. See you soon.